what's up everybody supreme decisions here and today i actually want to speak to you guys yeah i actually want to talk to you guys about one of those touchy subjects that pretty much no one likes to watch hear see think or believe is dealing with parental rights and yes not in studio right now but it is what it is today i want to talk about the weight that is given on a constitutional level or at a federal level to parental rights. And the case that I'm gonna to come to you with today is Santowski v. Department of Social Services, 455 U.S. 754, and it's a 1982 case. Now, most of us don't understand the context exactly what it is when we're talking about parental rights. Well, there are people that are actually going into these cases and having to deal directly with the state coming in, taking the child, no real basis, not even offering due process. And they're using interest of the child as a form of how they're working and maneuvering but in this case what was set up by the Supreme Court was one it held the process is constitutionally due a natural parent at a state initiated parental rights terminating proceeding now this is also where I talk about the removal of these type cases and I believe, well, I'll actually put it right here because it's under 1443 and also 1441. Those type removals are technically arbitrary hearings, but you're going to remove them under federal questions. Because A, in this part one, the fundamental liberty interest of natural parents is the care, custody, and management of their child is protected by the 14th Amendment. It does not evaporate simply because they have not been model parents or have lost temporary custody of the child to the state. Parental rights termination proceedings interferes with the fundamental liberty interests. When it delves right into the fundamental interests of the liberty, because even if they use biblical terms, the right of the parent is to guide the child. And their guidance is not to be interrupted or interfered with unless it is causing imminent or potentially gravely harm. I believe I said that correctly, but we'll go for it. Anyway, when the state moves to destroy weekend familiar bear bonds, it must provide the parents with fundamentally fair procedures. Remember, everything they have to do must be specific. Every request that's made must be satisfied to show due process and fairness because if not, it becomes malicious prosecution. Things that I've been throwing out for years, literally now three, that it applies even to state workers. Why? Because just like I read in the Constitution of Georgia in my podcast, Officer Kelvin Dingle on all your major podcasting platforms. I spoke about they are the trustees, the fiduciaries, and the servants of the people. Regardless of their actions, there are not authoritarians until. They're not authoritarians until. So until is satisfied they're in the position of a servant. So they still have to work in servitude. So now when we go into B, the nature of the process due to parental right termination proceeding turns on a balancing of three factors. The private interest affected by the proceedings, the risk of error created by the state's chosen procedure, which is always the most common, and three, the countervailing government interest supporting use of the challenged procedure. Because remember, we have an adversarial system. 
you must challenge that system in order to actually get the rights. You Man only has rights he will defend. You have to become part of that 5% and that 5% has to increase or you're accepting their behavior. You're telling them their behavior. You're reinforcing bad behavior. Understand that. And the fair preponderance, the fair preponderance of evidence standard subscribed by Section 622 violates the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. The balance of private interest affects, weighs heavily against use of such a standard in parental rights termination proceeding. Since the private interest affected is commanding and threatening laws is to something that is permanent. Two, a preponderant standard does not fairly allocate the risk of an erroneous fact finding between the state and the natural parents. Generally, this is used as discovery because there's a lack of disclosure because generally again these are things that happen when there are literally natural accidents understand that because the standard of proof more strict than the preponderance of evidence is consistent with the two state interests at stake in parental termination proceedings Lastly, before a state may sever completely and irrevocably the rights of parents in their natural child, due process requires the state to support its allegations by at least clear and convincing evidence. Clear and convincing evidence standard adequately conveys to the fact finder the level of substantive certainties about his factual conclusions necessary to satisfy due process. Now, what happens is the issue comes in discovery and disclosure. Those same outlines, because keep in mind, everything we're talking about now is in court. It's not hollering. It's not screaming. It's not throwing bottles and stuff like that outside where it doesn't mean anything. It's you getting into the ring, making a conscious effort to fight back, make them pull up their clear and convincing making them pull up they're clear and convincing now it's not free but neither is your liberty